Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics. I am really excited to bring you a fish room, fish barn tour. This is the Cichlid Barn. It is located in Florida. I will put their information down in the description below if you want more info. But this is a really cool tour. Not only are you going to see a lot of really nice looking fish with tons of color, you're going to get some behind the scenes in terms of how this facility is maintained. By the way, got the new summer Primetime Aquatics shirts. You can check out primetimeaquatics.com if you want to see more of these. Appreciate you being here. Hope you enjoy the video. Hello and welcome to the Cichlid Barn. I am really excited to bring you this tour. There were thousands upon thousands of really cool cichlids and as you're going to see throughout this video, a lot of high quality cichlids. If you are interested in checking them out further, check out Facebook, The Cichlid Barn. They do sell fish, so this is these are some amazing fish, and I'm going to take you through and let them explain how their systems work, what they do to produce so many awesome fish. They've got African cichlids of all types, Malawis. I saw some Lake Tanganyikan cichlids in there as well, and even a few Lake Victorians, but the setup is amazing, and you're going to see throughout this video how many high quality fish they have. This next part here I thought was really cool. Whenever you're feeding cichlids, especially African cichlids, it's pretty much like they've never eaten in their lives. They always approach food as it's a brand new thing and that they were all starving. And this is, it's really quite a sight when you're looking at these, these ponds and they're around 500 gallons and have hundreds if not thousands of cichlids in these ponds. And it's really fun just to watch them eat but a lot of really cool stuff. Now I apologize, I do not have the names for these cichlids. If you want more information, again, check them out on Facebook. They have stocking lists. You can certainly ask about the fish that you saw and whether or not they have them in stock. But this video wasn't done all that long ago, so they're probably available. I think what makes these fish so popular obviously is their color. They have amazing color, but more than that, they have such interesting personalities. They really understand their owner. They look at them, they interact with them, which I think can be a pretty cool feature. One of the underappreciated aspects of African cichlids is I think they absolutely rival koi in terms of the way they could look in a pond. Look at these fish. There is so much color. There is so much variety. There is so much action. And they absolutely look amazing when you're looking at them from top down. And if you're considering a smaller pond, this could absolutely be a potential striking thing to look at. So throughout this entire fish room, they were just amazing. You look at all this amazing color and it's just really cool. So let's take a closer look at exactly how this fish room runs. We're going to let Patrick tell you what he does. There are so many good ideas here, things that we can learn from, ways to set up large fisheries, large fish rooms. Let's go ahead and see what he's doing. How you doing? Well, this is a cichlid barn. So uh, we do Malawi cichlids here primarily. Um, I built and designed this uh, facility to be low maintenance and uh, high production. So I've got 40, uh, 40 of these uh, almost 500 gallon tanks. And um, I use the, the base tanks as racks for the above tanks, for the glass tanks. Um, so each tank has fresh water flowing in from the well, and every tank in this facility gets one to 400% water change per day. Automatic, don't have to worry about it. So the water flows in, and then it'll go in each tank, and then it'll overflow and drain, and then it'll, it'll come into this drain, and then it'll go out into the pond. 
So these bottom tanks, the way they work, is uh, it does have a filtration system, although with the, all this fresh water it might not be necessary, but that filtration system lets me overstock. So that's a homemade gravel fil under gravel filter there. I line cinder blocks there and nudge, uh, cut them to nestle them up tight to that pipe. That pipe is uh, slotted and lays underneath about uh, six inches of uh, bigger gravel. It's air driven, so it's very uh, energy efficient. So all the tank gets, this, this all gets turned over while it's having a big water change. So it's very healthy and it's, I'm able to put 500 three inch fish in a, in a 500 gallon tank. So if I want to get the fish out of this tank, I've got two nets, I can just get them like that. But if I want to drain this tank and get everything out, I just swivel this down to the level of those blocks and then it'll drain down and then all the fish will be trapped between the blocks and this wall and then I have a net of that exact size and then I'll just drag it through and we'll get all the fish in one swipe. And a lot of the breeders are up top and some of the stock here. I do, uh, I do some retail. Um, I do a little bit of uh, wholesale for shops and then uh, a lot of people come visit me and pick up. They'll come from Orlando, Cali, Tampa, Jacksonville. But um, this has become my full-time job. I got into it by accident. Um, fish bread, I put them in the garage. A couple years later I had a building in my house with tanks in it and started pushing them. And, and then I sold, uh, a few years in I sold a lot of fish. So. I uh, had this property and I decided to expand the business and I built this farm. Built the facility, I built the house, I built the ponds. We'll show you those a little later. So let's just do a walkthrough, I guess. I just rose. Oh, these uh, bottom tanks also have uh, little glass windows I incorporated. So if you come look on this side, You can see into the block tanks a little bit. Sometimes that's good for uh, uh, taking care of the fish or little kids want to see something. Yeah. But um, over here, uh, he's checking out the tank we're going to be working in. So this tank here. I'm going to take, uh, I've got a bunch of uh, mostly red OBP cocks in here and uh, uh, Borlei Candango. The Borlei Candango, I'm going to move to another tank and then the, the red OBs, I'm going to put in, in a uh, 30 by 70 foot pond outside. And uh, it's late spring now, so these fish are about uh, two and a half, three inches. So I'll put them in there and they'll immediately start breeding. And then in the fall, I'll be able to pull out thousands of fish. But uh, to prep these fish for draining, I'll, uh, I'll push this down and let it start draining and I'll shut off the water supply. I'll probably get some of them right now and then get the rest after it drains down. See, we got a lot of fish. Peacocks are just starting to color out. Uh, some of the Borley eyes are starting to look nice already. And some of the peacocks starting to color out. I got this small tank here. This is uh, Ruby Reds I stripped a couple weeks ago. So it's a 29. There's four, four or five hundred uh, uh, Super Ruby Reds in there probably. So what I do here is uh, this tank probably gets flipped over ten times a day. It gets a thousand percent water change a day. So I drained this pond completely and uh, got every fish out of here. So now we're going to stock it with some, um, I'm going to say on average three, two and a half, three inch uh, OB peacocks, mostly red line. But um, we release them at this age, and uh, at this time of year, they'll start breeding right away, and then they'll grow really fast and proliferate, and then in the fall, we'll pull out thousands of them. So, I just set them.
Mm. And uh, it's funny, like I'll throw food in there in about three days they'll be trained. They'll find it. I have a pipe over here. And then uh, I, just, I, I just leave some water flowing into the pond. So that keeps it nice and full and it keeps it uh, nice and fresh and they, it mitigates the temperature over here if they need it. And then uh, the overflow goes through a little creek into the other pond. And then there's a pond behind the building that takes all the uh, water from the barn. And that, uh, that overflows and flows into this big pond. This Jules, Cubans, uh, uh, probably a couple of jags in there maybe. I didn't put them in there, but there's flagfish, or flagfish, bluegill, they just naturally occur. So I just thought this was a really cool setup, an interesting way to breed fish, to keep fish. Those outdoor ponds are amazing. It gives you some perspective if you're breeding cichlids and you're, you're in the Midwest like I am or up north, just what can be done when people breed fish in climates that are a little bit easier to deal with when it comes to African cichlids. Having all those outdoor resources is pretty cool. So that was the Cichlid Barn. Hope you enjoyed the video again. They are on Facebook. Feel free to reach out there or check them out there at the Cichlid Barn. Hope you enjoyed the video. Appreciate you being here.